McLaren Art Center. My name is Megan Patterson and I will be your artist instructor today. Step one, we're going to take our piece of clay and we're going to make it into a ball. Almost like when you make a snowball. You're going to kind of pack it and hit it and get rid of all those rough edges and corners. Nice ball. Cut your hands back and forth. You can see it's starting to take shape. Really work at it. Use your muscles. Once it's in a ball, then you want to take all these little creases out. So you're going to smooth those with your thumb all around the ball. And again, just packing it. Two, you need to take your ball and you want to start to try and form a head and a tail. You're going to do that by taking your index and your thumb and squeezing that ball. Not right in the center, squeezing, creating a neck shape. Make sure you don't make it too skinny. You're going to do the same with the tail. You're going to squeeze that shape out, you can pull it push it around, but you want it to be one continuous shape. You don't want to rip any pieces of clay off. And then you can start to form it. So you're just going to start to kind of squish a head shape, squish a tail shape, pushing and pulling, creating maybe a nose, maybe he has ears. You're just going to keep squishing and pulling. One rule is not to make anything thinner than your thumb. So if something is thinner than your thumb, you need to make it a little bit thicker. Also, nothing should stick out from his body more than your picky finger. So you can use that to measure. So you don't want anything to break off. While you keep doing that, you want to keep smoothing out the cracks. Since it's a water creature, they're usually pretty smooth. But we want you to use your imagination. Put him against the table a little bit just to give him a flat base so he can stand. Step three, now you're going to grab your toothpicks, your water dish, and your other piece of clay and we're going to start to attach other things to the body, such as flippers. So if I wanted him to have some front flippers, I'm going to rip off a piece of clay and I'm going to start to form it just like I did with the ball in the beginning, but I want to make a little point at this one end. Flatten it out a bit, almost like a leaf shape. Remember, not too skinny. Here's one flipper. And then I'm just going to keep doing that. I want another one in the front, so I'm going to peel off about the same size. Roll it and pinch it. And don't forget to smooth all those cracks out. So now I have 
two flippers for the front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this end against the table to create a flat area. I'm going to do the same with this one. So now it's easier to attach them to the sides. With clay, you can't attach something to another piece. It'll just fall off. So we need to use a certain type of glue. What we're going to do is use four steps for this. So step one is you're going to take your toothpick and you're going to make marks on this side. The side you're attaching to his body. You're also going to make the same marks on his body where you want to attach it. So you're just doing some lines back and forth. Step two to attach it is you're going to just touch the water a little bit. You don't want to touch a lot, you're just going to get it a little bit wet there. The third step is to mush it on. So you're just going to move it back and forth, kind of work that glue together. And the fourth step to make sure it's not going to come off and probably the most important is you're going to smooth that on. So you can see the little line between where we attached it. You don't want to see that. Blend all the way underneath every side, smooth it all the way around. So now his flipper is good and attached. And we're gonna do that for every single piece that we attach. So I'm gonna do it for this one as well. And don't forget to smooth. So that sticks out the perfect amount. So you can keep adding bits with your clay. I'm going to create a fin on the top. So I think that's all the parts that I want to add for now. You can always add more things if you wanted to add more fins or anything else sticking out. Step four. Now we have this basic shape. We can start to add things like textures, eyes, gills, anything extra you want to see on him. And the toothpick is a great tool for this because you can dig into them, make some marks, you can add some gills. Get some nose holes. Another great thing that you can use to make marks other than the toothpick would be a pencil. The bottom of the pencil is circular. Create some eyes or spots. Be creative. Step five, you're going to put them aside to dry. This takes about three days, depending how hot it is. So this is the one that I just created. You can see that he's a little bit darker in color. And this one over here is already dry. So he's a little bit lighter and he's soft to the touch. Step six, you're going to take your paper and we're gonna create an underwater layer for Kelly. So we're creating an underwater habitat, a layer for our sea creature to live. So you want to think about how it's going to hide, where it's going to sleep, maybe what it eats. It's definitely going to be under the water. We're going to start by doing a cave. This can be anything you want. Maybe they don't live in a cave. Maybe they live in the seaweed. It's up to you to be creative. You just want to color it all in. So maybe you have some fish, some little crabs at the bottom of the ocean, the bay. Once you've colored everything in, you can go over it with some blue add some water. You can then fold it 
in half and prop it up so that your sea creature can sit in between. Step seven. Once your underwater sea creature is dry, then we can paint it. So it's very handy to have some spoons so that you can get the paint out of the little containers and put it onto the tray. You want to put them in each corner so they're separate. It's also handy to have another jug of water just to clean your paintbrush if you want to create a new color. I think I'm going to start with some yellow. Start with the lightest color. I'm going to put it in a new spot not to contaminate it. And I'm going to add some white so it gets a little bit lighter. I'm going to mix that together. I'm going to paint the whole thing yellow to have a nice base coat to work from. Picking it up just to make sure I get everywhere. So I'm going to get underneath here. And then I'm going to let him dry just so that stays. Step eight once you have a base color down, then you can get creative. You can do spots, you can do stripes, you can do a belly color, anything you want. Um, so you can mix your colors together or use the ones that we provided. I think I want to go for purple. So I'm going to take some of my blue, some of my red, and I'm going to mix those together. A nice dark purple. And I think I'm going to do some stripes on them. 